66 million Americans are at risk because of climate change. I'm talking about the polar vortex that is coming down, uh, you know, out of the Arctic. And it's pretty amazing what's going on here and why it's going on and how, and how Donald Trump is so stupid about it that it's like, this is a crisis. So here's the reality of what's going on. There is a river of air that flows about, you know, a couple hundred miles south of the North Pole that flows around the, you know, the, like, uh, the top of the globe. It's called the jet stream. And, that, and it travels over 100 miles an hour. And it is caused by a combination of the spinning of the Earth plus the difference between the temperatures at the latitudes here, you know, like North America, and the temperature at the Arctic, at the, at the North Pole. And when the North Pole is really, really cold, and we are not, that difference in temperature sets up the jet stream and makes it rigid and strong and, and all that kind of stuff. But over the last 15, 20, 25 years, what we've seen is a brand new phenomenon, brand new in the, in the weather history of this, con of this uh, uh, planet, basically. And that is that the jet stream is starting to break down. It's falling apart. It's drooling down, all the way down to Florida, where it never went before. The jet stream never went south of Michigan, you know, but it's now, it's drooling all the way down to Florida. And behind it is the, the, the extreme cold air that was on the North Pole. It kind of slides off to one side of the globe, sort of like a pulling a yarmulke off the top of your head to one side of your head, you know, or a, a hat or a cap pulling it off to the side. That's what's going on. And in fact, at the, at the Arctic, where the cold air used to be that is drooling down on, on Minnesota right now, at the Arctic, in these, in these higher latitudes, uh, uh, you know, the Arctic, over the Arctic Ocean, over the North Pole, the air is 125 degrees warmer than normal. And now we're going to have minus 55 wind chills in Chicago tomorrow. It's hitting Minnesota today. Now that's colder than Mount Everest. 17,000 feet above sea level. The base camp at Mount Everest, they got a weather station there. It's 30 degrees today. In Zackenberg, Greenland, it's minus 11. In Barrow, Alaska, it's minus 7. In Yellowknife, in the Northwest Tor Tor Territories in Canada, it's minus 5. No, you know, minus 55, a whole lot worse. What is causing this is the weakened Arctic jet stream. It's drooling down into America and bringing this minus 45 degree weather because of climate change. So what does our idiot princeling president have to say about this? As this polar vortex, I mean, Minneapolis just announced they're, they're shutting their schools through Wednesday. Brian Hurley, a meteorologist with the Weather Prediction Center, he says, you're talking about frostbite and hypothermia issues very quickly, like a matter of minutes, maybe seconds. Chicago is closing the Brookfield Zoo. It's only the fourth time in 85 years the zoo has closed because of weather. Northern Illinois could fall to a negative 55 degrees tomorrow. Life-threatening temperatures, 40 degrees below normal. So what does Trump say? He tweets, in the beautiful mid, this is this morning, right? He's got to have been watching Fox so-called news. In the beautiful Midwest, wind chill temperatures are reaching minus 60 degrees, the coldest ever recorded. In coming days, expect to get even colder. People can't last outside even for minutes. What the hell is going on with global warming? Please come back fast. We need you. Really? Donald J. Trump. Our president, who has access to the best scientists in the world. I mean, he could call up somebody at NASA or NOAA and say, what's going on? Why is it, why is it 60 below? In, going to be 60 below in Chicago. And they would say, Mr. President, it's because global warming has broken down the jet stream. The temperature at the Arctic is going up six times faster than the temperature is going up in Chicago. And what that means is that because the Arctic is warming, that the temperature difference between the Arctic and Chicago is not that great. 
And when you have a temperature difference that's not that great, you don't have a very strong wall of air. I mean, this is why, why, you know, if you think back to your meteorology and paying attention to the weatherman on TV back, you know, when 30 years ago when you were a little kid or 10 years ago when you were a little kid, you think back to that and they would talk about, well, there's a big cold front coming. It's, it's only 45 degrees behind it, and there's a, you know, warm air in front of it that's 65 degrees. That 20 degree temperature difference is going to mean thunderstorms, right? The cold front is coming through. Or a weak cold front, there's only a 5 degree temperature difference, so we might get a little bit of rain. Remember that? The bigger the temperature difference, the more violent the winds. The bigger the temperature difference, the more violent the, the tornadoes. The bigger the temperature, the bigger the pressure difference, the air pressure difference which is associated with temperature differences, is uh, hurricanes are fueled by the temperature of the ocean. The bigger the temperature difference and the pressure difference, the more violent the hurricane. This is like fifth grade science. And Donald Trump doesn't understand it. So he tweets this out. Here's a couple of other tweets that he, that he put out. This is from uh, November. He says, brutal and extended cold blast could shatter all records. Whatever happened to global warming? And in another one, this is from uh, December 29th, 2017, he said, in the East, it could be the coldest New Year's Eve on record. Perhaps we could use a bit of that good old global warning for our country. That our country, but not other countries, was going to pay trillions of dollars to protect against. Bundle up. Greg Jericho responds to Trump's tweet, you are an idiot. Wendy Harmer responds, when, <laughs> where do you even begin with this weapons-grade buffoonery? Jack says, world hunger isn't real because I had breakfast this morning. Right. Uh, Jeff Tiedrichs, that I'm too dumb to understand science act really plays well with your dimwit rube worshippers, doesn't it, Donald? I mean, it is an act, isn't it? Oh, my God. You're serious, aren't you? Ryan Higgins tweets, you are a staggering moron. Liberty tweets in response to Trump's tweets, it's called climate change, you clown. David Crowley, are you kidding me now? How is this man POTUS? Climate change is putting people's lives at risk. This isn't a joke. Extreme temperatures, both high and low, are deadly. We deserve a president who will take action instead of spreading lies for political gain. So what do we do about this? How do we, what's the next step? How do we, how do we wake up, how do you wake up Donald Trump? How do you get past the Fox News filter that is, you know, spouting the line that is being paid for by fossil fuel billionaires like the Koch brothers and the owners of ExxonMobil. How do you get past that? When they're actively promoting junk science, they're actively promoting lies about climate change. And as we speak, people are facing death. There are, in all probability, in the next three days, going to be Americans who die from this weather. May not be directly from frostbite and things like that. It may be indirectly from things like their cars dying and them getting in car accidents or freezing to death along the freeway or God only knows what. But historically, when you have wild weather swings like this, and this is particularly extreme because of global climate change, because of global warming, literally global warming, breaking down the jet stream so that Arctic air can now drool down onto, on, on top of us. People will die. And our president is making jokes about how, oh, gee, well, I want some global warming back. You fool. So back to my case from the previous hour that the Trump, can't, the Trump presidency in and of itself is a crisis on the order of the crisis that we faced with the Great Depression, on the order of the crisis that we faced after the Civil War, on the order of the crisis that we faced at the time of the American Revolution. We have a dotard, a dunce, an idiot, a, a, a narcissist, a sociopath sitting in the White House right now. And people around him sucking up to him, enabling him. Mike Pompeo, Mike Pence, uh, I, 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 I held a whole list of them. And some of them are just as bad as him. Betsy DeVos, really? The woman who wants to destroy public education is in charge of public education. Wheeler, the guy who wants to destroy the EPA, is in charge of the EPA. The, the people who want to destroy the Interior Department are in charge of the Interior Department. The people who want to destroy labor in the United States are in charge of the Labor Department. 
I mean, it just goes on and on. Will this crisis, will this idiot boy child in the White House, will this produce the progressive renewal in America that we need?